understand. Ants in the classroom, they're everywhere. I can't teach in this environment. You've got to do something about this. Well, where are they coming from? Well, they're around the window, all around the edge of the sink, in the plant. Uh, they seem okay. to be everywhere. I'll take care of that right now. Thanks. You know, we just can't have the room like this. Okay, I'll spray some of this. This will take care of your problem. Well, I hope it works. Thanks, Dan. There you go. Thanks. Dan, uh, the ants are back. I thought you oh. took care of this. Oh, man. They're you have a really over. bad problem. They're all over. You know, the, the kids, this is all they talk about. It's a big distraction. Yeah. I, I can't teach in this I'll environment. I'll spray them again. This will take care of it. Well, I hope it works this time. You should be using the right stuff. Oh, yeah. This is good stuff. And sometimes you have to spray a couple times, but, you know, you won't have any more problems now. Well, I hope it takes care of it this time. Okay. Well, we'll see how that does. Thanks, Dan. Okay, bye. Quick fix sprays rarely provide lasting control for pest problems. An alternative approach is Integrated Pest Management, or IPM. This presentation will define IPM, explain what's in an IPM program, and tell you why you should practice IPM in your school. We'll show you ways how IPM can be practically worked into your school maintenance program and tell you how you can make it happen. At the end of this section, you'll have the opportunity to see more specific ways IPM is carried out in schools and even get a chance to see some examples of IPM programs for common school pests. Finally, there is an interactive component that will stimulate discussion. So let's get started. Integrated Pest Management is a science-based, holistic approach to managing pest problems. Not only does IPM provide better control of pests, such as insects, weeds, or rodents, it can also limit the use of products and practices that may pose hazards for students and staff and the environment. IPM programs focus on strategies that prevent pest problems in the first place and provide long-term, lasting control. A big part of any IPM program is inspection, detection, and monitoring. Staff doing IPM need to regularly inspect the school environment for conditions that may lead to pest problems, then eliminate these conditions. Staff must also put out traps regularly and carry out other procedures to monitor and detect pest presence. Once detected, pests must be properly identified so appropriate management practices can be selected. IPM programs usually combine or integrate several pest management practices for long-term control or pest problems. Because IPM relies mostly on non-chemical preventive or least toxic methods, it reduces or eliminates pesticide use. Adopting an IPM program will have many benefits for a school or school district. First and foremost, because IPM programs rely on good knowledge of pest biology and emphasize long-term pest prevention, you will have fewer pest problems than a program that relies on repeated pesticide applications. In the long run, you will save money because IPM is more effective. By relying on non-chemical methods or least toxic methods, an IPM program reduces or eliminates use of most hazardous pesticides. Fewer pesticide applications mean a reduction in hazards to students and staff and potential environmental problems. Because under the California Healthy Schools Act, public schools must post before and after pesticide use and notify parents, relying on non-chemical methods will substantially reduce paperwork. Also, use of pesticides requires that employees follow many other legal requirements related to storing, transporting, and application, as well as use of specialized protective equipment. By requiring that records be kept, that specified procedures be followed in every type of pest situation, and that pesticides be applied only under predetermined circumstances when non-chemical methods have failed, an IPM program will provide accountability for parents, students, and staff. Staff will know what their role is when a problem occurs. Fewer mistakes will be made. Parents and the public will feel comfortable that their children and the environment are being protected. Developing a formal, written IPM policy for your school district 
is a good way to let the public know that this is an important issue for you and also will improve the way pest management is carried out in your schools. Please see the handout included on this DVD for more information on establishing an IPM policy. The most successful IPM programs have a knowledgeable and dedicated staff with the skills, resources, and authority to implement needed practices. All school districts must have an IPM coordinator whose job is to make sure that the requirements of the Healthy Schools Act are followed. This person is also usually knowledgeable about pest management methods and is responsible for making sure that IPM procedures are followed. The IPM coordinator carries out or supervises inspection procedures, makes sure records are kept, and that proper prevention and control methods are used when they are needed. If you have no one on your staff with IPM expertise, consider hiring an IPM consultant. Most everyone else in the school community needs to be involved in an effective IPM program as well. Staff and students must work as a team. Maintenance staff all need to maintain the physical environment in the school to prevent pest invasions. Keeping the cafeteria and other areas clean and sealing up pest entryways are key parts of IPM programs that all of these staff can be involved in. They also need to communicate problems to the IPM coordinator. Teachers participate by cleaning up food and keeping classrooms clutter-free, and by promptly reporting problems to the IPM coordinator. Students help out by throwing trash in appropriate containers and keeping their desks and lockers clean. Administrators need to provide strong leadership for the IPM effort, including both monetary and administrative support. IPM programs often mean that some staff may need to assume new responsibilities, or change the way certain tasks are carried out. Staff may need encouragement and may need training. Administrators may also need to support budget requests to upgrade facilities to build pest problems out. Although these initiatives may be costly at first, they will pay for themselves many times over once the work is complete. Here are some examples. Prevention should be the main focus in an IPM program. Many pests can be prevented with good planning and design. IPM practitioners look for opportunities to design pests out when putting in new facilities, when remodeling, or repairing existing facilities, or when planting new areas. For instance, applying insecticidal dusts in wall voids when remodeling or putting in new buildings will prevent roaches from establishing and ants from entering. Eliminating gaps, holes, and cracks in newly constructed as well as old buildings will keep insects and rodents out. Installing door sweeps and weather stripping around all windows and doors are other ways to discourage pest invasions. In kitchens, screens on floor drains and sealing around pipes will discourage cockroaches, mice, and other invaders. Many small changes in outdoor landscaping or maintenance can make a big difference. Ivy, ground cover, or other plants growing right next to perimeters of buildings can harbor pests such as ants, roaches, and rats, or mice, making it easy for them to enter buildings. Keep plants at least one foot away from structures. A thin layer of gravel where inaccessible to students or a concrete strip all around the perimeters will keep weeds at bay. Install concrete mowing strips around lawns and at fence lines to make weed management easier at these locations. It is really hard to control weeds at fence lines if the fence was installed in turf. When planting new areas, location is important. Select well-adapted and pest-resistant plant species that will thrive in the location you are planting them. Take sun and shade requirements into consideration when planting new plants. Use plant species that will grow fast and can shade out weeds. Install mulches and landscape fabrics to prevent weeds from establishing. Keep trash cans away from doors. Dumpsters should have tight-fitting lids and be kept closed. Keep all dumpsters and other garbage or recycling bins on concrete or asphalt pads. Try to keep bins near a water source so that they can be cleaned out regularly. Seal pavement cracks to avoid weed growth or ant colonies from establishing. Modify buildings that have a lot of flat surfaces where pigeons can roost. Build sloping caps on columns or other flat surfaces to discourage them. 
None of these measures are difficult to do, and they cost very little, but the payoff is big. Although an IPM program will require that you do things differently, it will save you money compared to a traditional program of routine spraying for pests. An IPM program will require more communication among administrators, teachers, and custodial staff. There may be some initial upfront costs to initiate a strong prevention program, such as modifying the school buildings or grounds. However, IPM programs pay for themselves because they are more effective and longer lasting than conventional pest control. For instance, if you modify your facility to keep pests out, you will have fewer problems for many years. Door sweeps and weather stripping not only keep pests out, but save on heating and cooling costs. Fixing leaky pipes to eliminate unwanted moisture will also save water. Mow strips and mulches save on weed control spraying costs. Regular monitoring for pests helps you focus your efforts on especially vulnerable areas. You save money because you are not treating everywhere. You will need to buy baits and traps and other IPM tools, but you will compensate by saving money on spraying costs. We've been using integrated pest management techniques for over five years now in our school district, and it's proved very effective. We've reduced the pesticide usage throughout the school, and this has saved money. It has re uh, protected the children from coming in contact with as much pesticide, and we don't have to go through the notification and posting requirements as often. Therefore, the overall effect is uh, that it is effective on control of the pests and uh, good for the school and good for the children. So we encourage everybody to start using these methods in their school districts. You can gradually make the switch from conventional pest management to IPM. Begin implementing IPM in one location, such as one area of the grounds or one classroom or in the kitchen. Focus on pests such as cockroaches or ants where good IPM alternatives are available. Start with small projects such as sealing holes and foundations, installing weather stripping or door sweeps to exclude pests. Initiate a regular inspection, detection, and monitoring program to find out where your most serious problems are and develop appropriate management programs. Remind teachers, other staff, and students of their role in keeping all areas of the school clean and using garbage cans and recycle bins. Expand your IPM program when it is working successfully in one area. Be aware of building issues and gather support for long-term projects. Consolidate programs. Often preventive methods or monitoring activities for one pest can also be adapted for others such as ants, cockroaches, and rodents. Take advantage of every opportunity to build pest problems out. The best opportunities are during the early planning and design stage of new facilities or when remodeling, repairing, or retrofitting existing facilities. Encourage or require IPM training for staff and understand that their job responsibilities will change. Incorporate pest management into job descriptions of new staff appointments. Award staff for large and small successes. If you have regularly scheduled pesticide applications for certain pests, replace them with a program of inspection, monitoring, and prevention, and spray only as a last resort. Hire an IPM consultant or a pest control advisor who is competent at pest management. Find expertise when you need it. Consult with other districts that have IPM programs. Develop an IPM policy for your school district that establishes procedures and policies to be followed when pests become a problem. Remember, a successful IPM program needs cooperation from the administration, teachers, students, and staff.
On the following screens, you will be presented with several scenarios that will reinforce key ideas in the presentation and give you a chance to discuss integrated pest management with the group. Follow the instructions for each question. For many of the questions, you will be instructed to hit pause so that you can have time to discuss your thoughts. Resume play when you are ready. In your school district, what are the barriers that might keep you from implementing an IPM program? Some examples may be lack of trained staff, lack of money, too difficult or too time-consuming. Take a few minutes and discuss the barriers most important in your district. How can you overcome these barriers? Here are possible solutions to overcoming barriers in your district. DPR provides low-cost training. Ask your risk manager about training opportunities. Seek outside expertise. Some IPM practices won't cost anything new. Permanent solutions provided by IPM will save money over the long run. Pick one or two problems to address at first and use methods that have been demonstrated to work for other districts or in other situations. What IPM methods have been implemented in your district? Please share your experiences with the group. Proceed to the next question when you are ready. What would be the appropriate roles of the following people in a school IPM program? The administrator. Administrators provide leadership for IPM effort, including both monetary and administrative support. They encourage staff with new responsibilities or training, and they approve upgrades to the facilities. The IPM coordinator. IPM coordinators follow the Healthy Schools Act and practice IPM in their district. Maintenance staff. This group maintains the physical environment of the campus, seals up pest entryways, and communicates with the IPM coordinator about pest problems and pest treatments. Teachers and students. Teachers and students are responsible for keeping classrooms, lockers, and other areas clean. They should report any problems to custodians or the IPM coordinator.